pa 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 Hello, man babies. Ruin Johnson here. So, I'm taking one for the team. I've got a free ticket for the midnight showing of The Rise of Skywalker. And I'm going to go do it. I'm going to do it for you guys. And I will come back in a few hours. It's what? Half 11 here in the UK. Um, around about 3 a.m., I'll be back home and I'll give you my honest opinion. And um, yeah, we've seen some of the stuff coming out on Twitter. I've avoided all of the reviews. I am going in open minded. You know my thoughts. Um, I don't think it can be fixed, but we will see. But I will tell you as it is after I've seen it in a few hours' time. So wish me luck. May the force be with me. I'm wearing wearing the man baby t shirt. So uh, we'll see how it goes. And if need be, I'll wear the mask as well. See you later, man babies. just seen the rise of Skywalker as Richard E. Grant would say and it wasn't great it wasn't great at all so if The Last Jedi was a slow space chase the rise of Skywalker is a slow treasure hunt it skips around from place to place looking for this looking for that oh we found this that will lead to that I lost the will about halfway through um, it embraces the concept of Mary Sue. Well done, JJ, because we all love that. And it embraces Raylo. So if you really love those elements, you're going to love this film. And if you didn't, you definitely won't. Uh, what's good? Uh, I actually thought the opening was, was good, was, was okay. If you ignore the fact it's not been set up properly uh, by the previous movies, it was a strong opening, like first five or ten minutes, and then Ray appears on screen, and it's the most cringy daft humorous moment forced humor which doesn't work at all um in terms of the other characters r2d2 it, i don't think he was in the film i don't remember seeing him in the entire film which is ridiculous one of the most legendary characters chewy is is been demoted from even being an uber driver like he was in the last jedi look the visuals are great the music's great uh, a lot of the questions are not answered uh, the ending is essentially just a, a, a complete rip of uh, Return of the Jedi. You know, ragtag ba ground force, battling away, a space battle, and then a battle against Palpatine. It's just Return of the Jedi. Uh... Okay, so let's, let's go back uh, right to the opening. So, as I mentioned, I did think it was a strong opening. It's not been set up, obviously, by the previous films because it involves uh, the Emperor and Kylo finding the Emperor. But, ignoring the fact it's not been set up, just judging it on its own, I thought it was a pretty strong opening, actually. But then we have this scene with Rey, and it is really ridiculous. What a bad way to introduce Rey when there's already... You know questions about the character and not the most popular and it's just really bad dad joke moment uh, really really bad I can't believe they left it in but there we go um, and from there the really the, it, it takes a sharp nosedive because it's it's just moving so quickly it's it they dive into this plot which as I mentioned, it's it's just a, a slow treasure hunt, uh, finding wayfinders and knives with inscriptions on, and then more wayfinders, and we now need this person to do this, and we've got to go to this planet. It's They're all over the place. Uh, they're literally all over the place, different planets, and it's all moving too quickly. Uh, we, we're not able to, to settle into the film. We're not able to understand the plot. Uh, and the characters' motives. Then we have this scene uh, where the the Falcon, I think it's, they call it light speed skipping, which we're introducing new stuff again now, where it's small light speed jumps to escape uh, the Tie Fighters. I don't know. Again, we're introducing new things into the lore, so that's never been used before. Character development, so. Some of the legendary characters are completely, completely ignored. 
So R2-D2 must get, I'd be surprised he gets more than 30 seconds screen time. It is really shocking. And what's most shocking about it is C-3PO is actually really good in this film and has a really interesting uh, story arc. And I, actually, I enjoyed the, the C-3PO moments. Now, there was a prime opportunity because we associate C-3PO with R2-D2 to have them on screen together, to have that interaction. C-3PO uh, has his memory wiped and there was, you could have had some real emotion there with R2-D2, but no, instead we're introduced to this hairdryer on a wheel, which instead of R2-D2, he goes off on the adventure with C-3PO. I don't... I, what has JJ got R, against R2-D2? He threw a tarpaulin over him in The Force Awakens and now he just completely ignores him in this movie. The other character I thought was completely, completely overlooked was Chewbacca. Again, he's he's just ignored. He's put into the background. Uh, it's, I, can, I can maybe recall two scenes where he, 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 he played any a part of any note. Other characters, so Poe to me just felt like a different character. It was a bit weird, uh, but I guess this is what happens when you have different directors taking over. But yeah, different character, and I, I don't mean he's developed. I ju just seemed different. He's suddenly quite snarky and sarcastic. But there was potential with Poe and with Finn. We had that dynamic that we saw originally in The Force Awakens, and it would have been good to to have had all three films to develop that. But, of course, Ryan Johnson did for that one. Um, Finn just spends the film shouting Ray. Again, he's just Ray's lapdog. <laughs> so that was a bit of a wasted character. Some of the new characters I liked, but we just didn't get the time. You're introducing new characters while you're trying to wrap up a 40-year-9 movie saga and you just don't have time to explore them there's one interesting character uh with um which has a history with poe which you know it's just hinted at and it would have been nice to explore that further just not given the time to do it uh rose tico is resigned to being um just st stuck on the resistant base monitoring screens and as for the characters, Leia, uh, I mean, look, there's no doubt they've done a great job with the CGI and, and fitting it into the movie. But I, I just didn't feel emotionally connected to it. I don't know, maybe because I knew it wasn't the actual actress. I don't know what it was. And, and uh, her death scene, it just didn't, didn't work for me. Now, on death within the film, this is a major problem. And it's... It's a common problem with JJ. So the number of time characters are seemingly killed, but then brought back, it's it, it's just ridiculous. It, nothing becomes believable. So at one point, we're supposed to believe Chewie's dead. Oh no, here he is back again. Then we're meant to believe uh, Kylo Ren's killed. Oh no, he comes back again. Then Ray's dead. Oh no, she comes back again. And it, once you've seen that more than once, you just question anything in the movie. So that's really poor writing, I thought. Do any of the questions get answered from the previous films, from The Force Awakens, from The Last Jedi? Not really, no. They're not answered. Uh, he does try to delve into Rey's parentage, obviously. That's linked to Palpatine, but doesn't answer the question sufficiently. Can I can I find anything good about the movie? Look, the visuals are good. Uh, it seems like an obvious one, but there's some really talented people who work on these films. There's a huge budget pumped into it. Uh, they're great at what they do, the CGI, the practical effects, and of course the music. It's uh, John Williams' last Star Wars film, and the music's fantastic. But... Um, the whole thing felt rushed, felt disjointed. It, uh, it just barreled along without really giving us any time to pause for thought. It felt like it just wanted to get to that big set piece ending and then the ending itself, 
it is just a rehash of Return of the Jedi for me. In some ways, literally a rehash of Return of the Jedi. We've got Ewoks on Endor. Um, it's set in the same place. We've got a ground battle with a ragtag band using primitive weapons. Sound familiar? Uh, we have the uh, space battle, uh, fleet against fleet. And then we have the battle against uh, Rey against Palpatine. It's just it mirrors Return of the Jedi in a, a lot of ways, like JJ did um, with New Hope when he made The Force Awakens. He does not have new original ideas, and it really shows. Um, I mentioned Anthony Daniels was good. Ian McDermott, look, he plays the Emperor brilliantly, and the Emperor should never have been in this movie. It, uh, it retcons everything. Uh, Luke did and um, and Anakin Darth Vader but uh, he he played it well there's no doubt about that but that's about as good as I can say for it the humour's awful it really it started to grate uh, I don't know why they feel the need to wedge in the, these awful dad jokes Leave the humour with, with the droids and with Chewie. You know, you have those moments and it, they're naturally funny, but don't force this stuff in. It's so bad. You know, I'm not I'm not angry and I'm not even disappointed is the wrong word. I'm just sad. I'm sad it's boiled down to this, that a 40-year... Uh, franchise as uh, you know it's been passed between two directors who really don't understand the law the canon and between them have made a right balls up of it and you know to put the the icing on the cake JJ fully embraces the concept of Mary Sue there's absolutely no doubt about that oh here's a good one for you a girl who grew up on a desert planet is an expert sailor she has this incredible scene where she sails these impossible waves. She grew up on a desert planet. Mary Sue can do anything. Oh, she's now got uh, incredible healing powers as well. So he, he just goes full balls to the wall with Mary Sue. And then finally, the biggest insult of all, Raylo. So JJ had a decision. Do I, um, do I quash this Raylo thing or... Do I run with it and embrace it? And he chose the second one. And by the end of the film, it's gone full twilight. It's uh, it's ridiculous. So, sadly, um, I went in with low expectations, and I, yeah, it it even fell below those low expectations. If you go see it. Um, I hope you get something out of it. I hope I hope you can enjoy it. Uh, maybe if there's some fans who go in w without really carrying the uh, you know the baggage of the original trilogy like I do, maybe they can get something from it. I don't, but for me, it's uh, doesn't work. It doesn't work as a Star Wars film. It doesn't work within that trilogy, and it certainly doesn't work within the nine film saga. So that. They're my thoughts. Uh, I will do a follow-up, no doubt, because I'm half an hour removed from seeing it. So, yeah, I will I will absolutely let this sink in, see what other people have to say, and uh, I'll follow this one up. But, well, it's 4 a.m. I'm going to get some, uh, get some shut eye. Uh, so, wherever you are around the world, I'll see you later, man, babies. Good night. I'm on my own, broken along. I feel the rain crashing down. All around this empty town, we're searching for the lost and found.